Michael Reed on LMFM is heard live from 9 a.m. weekdays, and this is a repeat broadcast of the program. But you can make comment right now on our 24 hour comment line. Call us now or anytime on 1850 365 958. That's 1850 365 958. And the lines are open now. Michael Reed on LMFM. Yes, this is Orla Carmody filling in for Mike Reid and we had a call in here from Jimmy and Jimmy ran to congratulate Orla on talking about this issue. He says that citizenship, radio and journalism is the way forward. People appreciate the opportunity to get their thoughts and views across and they feel that this gives them a platform to speak their mind in these times of unrest and uncertainty. It's important for the public to feel that they have the means to have their voices heard. So that's from Jimmy and Dundalk and thank you very much indeed for that comment. Jimmy, now if you were watching Ortiz Nationwide programme earlier this week, you might have seen a feature on a project that has started in Dundalk Institute of Technology called AbleVision, and it aims to make the fascinating world of television accessible to people who are intellectually challenged. The project got big support from DKIT, which pulled out all the stops to make it happen, and I have to declare my own interest here in that I'm a supporter of this project, but I'm only in the Tupney Hapney place compared to the man who's joining me now, John Delaney. John is a campaigner for rights and employment opportunities for the disabled Good morning, John. Good morning, Orla. Great to talk to you. John, the idea came from America. Tell us how that happened. Um, We have an American cousin uh, who contacted us two years ago and suggested we look at YouTube. Um, She said that AbleVision in the US were running these great uh, programs and suggested we look at it. So straight away, uh, we checked out YouTube, uh, thought thought it uh, it was ideal, it was exciting. Um, We did the usual. We Googled um, found an email address and started a correspondence with the people in AbleVision in the US. Um, it took uh, nearly a year before we actually got through to AbleVision. AbleVision are like, uh, they're part of the um, Triangle Group. The Triangle Group are like the John of Gods for people with intellectual disabilities in the States and AbleVision are their television arm. And we contacted the AbleVision people and they gave us a lot of support and uh, helped us to set the programme up. Told so us you modelled your project here based on their one. And exactly how does it work, John? Describe it to us. Um, what they do, they put together a team of able-bodied uh, students and uh, they put it up with people who have an intellectual disability. And they uh, basically, they, get, they do camera work and they do microphone work and they interview uh, famous people. And uh, they do that out in the open and they come back and they edit it in the studio. Um, as the uh, producer of Able Vision in the US, Lisa Carboni, said these people um, are, are as good, as capable as anybody else. They just do it in a little slower fashion. And you got this project up and running at DKIT. How did that work? Um, the way it happened in DKIT is um, our daughter um, did a course in contemporary living in DKIT. She's, she's uh, attends Midway Services in Navan, and Midway pioneered a leadership and advocacy course and a contemporary living course for adults with intellectual disability in DKIT four or five years ago. So we were aware of what they had done in Dundalk. I'd done some stuff in Dundalk myself for research, and I became aware of the Carol's building there and the media studies people. Um, I contacted uh, your good self, Orla. Uh, I also uh, contacted Dennis Cummins, who's the uh, president of DKIT, and asked him could he help us to put this thing together. And uh, that's what he did. Now, John, I think it's fair to say that colleges are notoriously full of red tape and sometimes it's hard to get different faculties to cooperate. But you seem to have gotten the faculties in in Dundalk to really pull out all the stops on this one and make it happen. Uh, The faculties in Dundalk were great. We sat down with them in the beginning of October 2011 and we said uh, uh, with uh, Dennis Cummins, he pulled together the School of Nursing and Miles Hackett and uh, the media studies with Sarah McCann and said, uh, can we put this program together? And they asked us, when would we like it? We said, we'd like it to start as soon as possible and we want to have something ready by Christmas, <laughs> which was six weeks away, really. And they, they, they pulled out all the, the stops and there was no red tape. Everything was done as quickly as possible. It was terrific. It's a, real, it's a monument to their achievement. All right, John. Now, I know you've been an advocate and campaigner for rights for the disabled for many years uh, through your own family situation. So I want you to stay on the line because we're joined now by Sinead Kane, who is the first legally blind qualified solicitor in Ireland. Sinead, you're very welcome. Good morning, Orla. Now, Sinead, I know you have a very small percentage vision, but can you tell me how did you manage to read all the texts and get through all you had to do in order to qualify as a solicitor? 
Well, I used a very heavy magnifier and I used Zoom text on the computer, but I suppose like that working with a magnifier is just a doddle in the park to me because throughout my life I have experienced a lot of adversity, but I don't see adversity as an obstacle, like I see it as a, an opportunity because I have this motto, believe in yourself, anything is possible. And I suppose when I am using the magnifier and if it is becoming cumbersome, that's what I would be telling myself to believe in myself. Anything is possible. So many times, like I was told in my life by so many different people that I'd never qualify as a solicitor because they were telling me that it's a reading based subject. At 17 years of age, I was brought into my careers advisor room and my careers advisor teacher told me not to go on to college, just to do a PLC course or a FOSS course because this woman did not believe that I could achieve, that I could um, have a profession or anything like that because all she kept seeing was that my disability was my eyes. Law was a reading-based subject. And what I've learned from that experience is that when you're around negative people like that, when they try and pull you down, that if you feed into that negativity, you will start believing that. You will start believing, I am a failure. I can't contribute to society. But thankfully, I have my motto believe in yourself anything is possible Sinead you're obviously very very determined but do you think that an employer will be able to see beyond disability to your very obvious ability yeah, well, I think that if you have integrity, like my parents taught me from a very early age to be honest and straightforward with people. I discovered at four years of age that I was visually impaired. Um, how it happened was that I leant too close to the telly screen. My nose touched against the screen. I got a bit of a shock and then I got very upset. And then we had the whole conversation and my parents sat me down and they at four and they said, Sinead, you are different and this is the way it's going to be. And you're, it's not going to change. You're going to be like this for the rest of your life so you may as well start dealing with the problem now and what I learned from that situation was that if you actually start dealing with the problem and being honest and open about your disability then not only are you self-respecting yourself and self-accepting yourself but you're respecting other people because how are other people to learn from you if you if you can't deal with the problem yourself so uh, I think it's um, about uh, self-accepting yourself and then educating the employer. OK, John, if I can bring you back in there. Obviously, you're listening there to Sinead. I'm sure you can identify with what she's saying very, very much indeed. And what would you say to employers listening to somebody like Sinead? Give them a chance, obviously. Give them a chance. But uh, Sinead has a great ability. She's approved it, but she has a, a legal uh, degree as well to prove it. And she is a solicitor, so she has proven herself. She just had to get beyond that barrier. And what do you think are, are the reasons why employers perhaps, I know now Sinead herself is job hunting currently, she told us that earlier, and she's job hunting herself, but how do you get it across to employers to actually, you know, see what people can do as opposed to what they can't do? Well, I'm not sure how you can get them to do it. In the, you can get them to do it on an individual basis, but I think on a, a more broader basis, you need to make people aware of the ability of people who, are, who have got a disability. You have to make people aware of this, of what these people have. And do you think your project, John, Able Vision, do you think through that, that some of the people who train in this, they would actually get employment out of it? Um, yes, we believe they'll get employment um, in it, it differently than people have thought about 20 years ago, but they certainly will have employment and it will be uh, through the media studies and uh, making maybe small programs for television or for uh, cinemas. Uh, we believe it's possible. Um, and we can use their skills and they do bring a new dimension to it and people are delighted when they see what they can do. Is there any uh, ambition to have a formal qualification come out of this module you've developed between the media studies students and the uh, nursing yes. or the assisted living students? Yes, we're trying, the, we're trying to get um, FETAC accreditation for uh, any course that's completed in DKIT using media studies students and uh, adults with intellectual disability. Uh, that's a long, uh, drawn-out process, we're told, but um, we were given six weeks to get a programme ready, so maybe we hope to have something ready by the summer. I don't know, but we will try. We know what the, the barriers are. We just try and get over them, but our intention is to have it as an approved course. Well, and what other um, aspects to your project do you see going into the future? Do you see this spreading to other colleges around the country? We hope to bring it to every college around the country, every third level college around the country, and use uh, Dundalk and the experience of people in Dublin North East um, as a module for them to copy. Uh, we believe it's possible, but we will have a very uh, refined model ready for other people to use. They won't have to spend two years researching it. 
All right, John Delaney of Able Vision Ireland, thank you very much for joining us and we wish you all the best with that project into the future. And Sinead Kane, thank you also for joining us. Michael Reed on LMFM. Call us now on 1850 365 958.